What's up everyone? This video has been a long time coming. It's part two of the 240's interior restoration. It was super labor intensive and took about three to four months to film, but the results turned out fantastic and I can't wait to walk you guys through it. But in the meantime, we've also done a bunch of other stuff to the car, some of which you've seen, like swapping the new wheels and tires, the five lug hubs, and installing the custom audio system. But in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the whole process of gutting the interior and laying down a ridiculous amount of sound deadening. I'm also gonna put in new carpet, talk about the audio system a little bit more, and finish up some of the finer details. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, there's just one more thing before we begin that I wanted to share with you guys. So I was doing some practicing just to make sure all of the filming went smoothly. And when I was taking the passenger side door panel off, you won't believe what I found inside. It's the 240's original window sticker from 1989. How cool is that? So basically what must have happened at the dealership that it was sold at, someone must have rolled down the window, and when they rolled it back up, the sticker got caught and scrunched up in between the glass and the, the window track itself. So this thing has been living in the door panel for almost 30 years. The first thing I'm gonna do here is to go ahead and remove the driver's seat so I have a little bit more room with being able to crawl through the interior, taking out the console, and especially getting into the rear seat. Next, I'm gonna take out the center console. First, I gotta remove four screws. There's two on this side that I've already removed and two in the same position on the back side. Next, we have to remove all of this top trim. First, gotta take off the shift knob and then pop off the trim surround that goes around the climate control and the radio. And then pop out the ashtray and might as well pop out the lighter while we're at it. Once I've removed two screws now that are exposed just ahead of the shift housing, this console should come loose to the point where I'll start working it around the e-brake handle and go ahead and disconnect the wires to the um, cigarette lighter and the power mirror switch. The last thing I'm going to do in the console for now is to go ahead and remove this aftermarket radio in the little storage compartment underneath because the carpet actually goes under the dash to about right here or so. I'm not gonna be taking out this dashboard. It's gonna be too labor intensive and I don't wanna risk cracking it. So I'll be able to cut the hole around the transmission right here and just kind of feed it in, but I need to have the clearance. So we're gonna take the radio out. All right, let's go ahead and take out the back seat. Just pull up on these little tabs underneath to release the clips and the bottom cushion should just come out with ease. Now that most of the cabin has been taken out, I want to go ahead and tackle the other door panel. This one, all you have to do, remove two screws. There's one in this little pocket right here. You have to pop a little cover to see it. There's another one on the inside of the panel here. Again, another cover. Just pop it and you'll see the screw. Once you take those two things out, just use a couple panel removal tools and remove the trim around the door handle itself and around the window switches. Thank you. 
The last thing to do now is to remove the three trunk panels. There's one on either side and one at the rear. All right, the time is finally here. Let's go ahead and yank this old carpet out. Lucky Penny. I can honestly say I don't think I've ever been so invasive when it comes to taking apart a car in my life. It's quite cool, actually. It is not going to be fun putting this all back together. I can, I can guarantee that. And it's quite disgusting in here. There's mouse poop, um, acorn pieces, dirt old insulation, so I have a lot of cleaning to do, so I guess I'm going to get started on that. Now that that's all said and done, I've been making really good progress with step one of the sound deadening process, and that's laying down all the vibration damping material. I've already covered the trunk and the majority of the center console, but there's still a lot more to do, but I'll get to that in just a moment. I'm going to be using four different products in this car from a company called Second Skin, so if you're interested in doing this to your car, I put the links to everything in the description box below if you wanted to learn more. I'm going to be using Damplifier Pro for the vibration damping, Luxury Liner Pro for a noise barrier, Overkill Pro to act as a noise filter in the doors and some of the other tighter areas of the interior, and their Speaker Tweaker Kit, but I'm going to talk about that more in a separate video where I install a complete custom audio system into the car. The first thing that you have to do before putting down the vibration dampers is to make sure you have a very clean surface to adhere the product to. In doing that, I vacuumed the entire interior and then put a bunch of denatured alcohol on a rag and just gave it a thorough wipe down. After everything is clean, you can go ahead and start putting down the mats. To make it easier on yourself, you can heat them up with a hairdryer or leave them in the sun for a few minutes to make them a little bit more flexible. After you get it down, you can go ahead and press certain areas with your hands, but to make sure it adheres properly, especially in cracks and crevices, you're going to want to use either a rubber roller or a wooden roller to get it more precise. If you didn't want to take it to the extreme like I am, you can probably cover about 60% of the surfaces that you're working with, but if you do that, you're going to want to space the mats out in kind of a checkerboard pattern to cover all of your bases. But I'm trying to go over the top of this car, so I am covering every little nook and cranny that I can possibly reach. Now I need to put down the noise barriers, which actually doubles as a thermal insulator as well. Because the product is heavy, it needs to go on the bottom side of the car. Therefore, the Overkill Pro mat that I mentioned earlier is going to go in the doors and the side panels. A few things to remember when installing the noise barriers. First, you're going to want to cover as much real estate as possible. That being said, you want to make sure to measure the area that you're working with and account for any curves or humps or anything like that. Once you have all of the mats in place, it's a good idea to put a layer of spray adhesive on the back of the closed cell foam and on top of the vibration dampers to create a nice tight seal and prevent the mats from sliding around later down the road. Depending on the shape of your floor pan, you might have to break the mats up into different sections. But like I said a second ago, you want to make sure to cover as much real estate as possible because you don't want any noise coming up through cracks that you might have left open. So if you have to join mats up together, connect them with a piece of foil tape. When I was originally trying to figure out all the stuff that I wanted to do to the interior, I found this company called Auto Custom Carpets and they offered a complete replacement carpet set for this car, which I was really surprised about. And it's a cut pile type carpet and it's a lot higher quality and more of a substantial material than what originally came in the car, especially with the trunk mat. So I'm really happy how it all turned out. They have a bunch of different options and colors available. I tried to pick one that was you know as close as possible to the original, but all in all, it looks great and honestly it makes the interior look a lot nicer than it did before. So the carpet is in. The last thing I have to do is start refitting the side panels. But before I do that, I want to take that Overkill Pro that I showed you earlier in the video and cut templates around everything to provide an extra noise barrier. It's not as dense of a material as that Luxury Liner Pro so you can actually mount it vertically. I used a little bit of spray adhesive to make sure it was tacky as well, but it definitely made a little bit of a difference, especially in the front doors. I can tell that the window motors are a bit quieter now. 
So before we go into why I put this amplifier behind the passenger seat, I just wanted to quickly mention that these power wires that I have laid through the interior are just temporary. I mentioned in the audio install video that when I swap the RB in, we're going to have to do a rear amount of battery setup. So this is just temporary so I can drive it down the road for just a little bit and make sure everything worked properly. My main reasons for putting the amplifier here is one, a lack of interior space. Two, I wanted to preserve some sort of trunk space back there with the sub and the battery that's gonna go back. And three, it wouldn't fit underneath the passenger seat. This is really where I wanted to put it, but with the carpet and sound deadening, there just wasn't enough clearance. Because of its size, the back seat is obviously pretty useless. So the only natural positioning for this amplifier was in the floorboard here as far back as possible. That way, this seat is able to maintain all of its functionality. You can slide it back and forth, you can climb into it, no issue of hitting the amp. Plus, when you put the seat back all the way to its normal position, you're not gonna see the amp underneath, which is really nice. So a lot of the trim clips and retaining things and stuff through the interior, you just, you can't find anymore. I was lucky to find these upper retaining clips through Nissan to hold this privacy cover down because when I bought the car, they were all pretty much broken and this was practically useless. But the ones down below here, the most important ones, were completely broken off and you can't buy those anymore. So between parts cars and salvage yards, I found a bunch of extra clips, so I'm super thankful. I'm going to get this one put in up here and I can finally secure this back in place. So throughout this build so far, I've been approached by a handful of brands wanting to send some products for us to test out on the car for, you know, protecting, daily usability and all that kind of stuff. So there's a few that I want to highlight in particular for this video. The first of which is Covercraft. They sent over three things, including one of their really nice car covers, a sunshade and a dash mat. The dash mat is pretty cool. They offer a bunch of different styles. It's basically a piece of woven carpet that's molded to fit the top end of your dash and prevent sun exposure. The most important thing for me is to protect this original dash, which is uncracked. It's like a unicorn in the 240 realm. The thing that I'm most excited about trying is the sunshade because like the dash mat, it was custom made for this car. It fits flawlessly and blocks out all of the sun. Now this is not a car that's going to sit outside for obvious reasons, but in the off chance that I do have to put it outside for whatever reason, Covercraft sent over their top of the line car cover so it would have the best protection possible. Since we're on the subject of protecting things, 303 Products also sent me a bunch of stuff out of their product line to not only test out on this car, but some of the other cars as well. They offer pretty much anything and everything in regards to car detailing, but they're especially known for their UV protectants, which again, for this dash and a lot of the padded materials in this car is especially important. Plus with this new carpet, it's a great opportunity to try out their stain guard. They sent over a bunch of stuff, and as someone who's absolutely obsessed with detailing, I'm looking forward to putting all this to good use. The last is Prestige Pack. I don't know if you guys noticed already, but I deleted all of the cargo hooks out of the trunk area. It just makes it look nicer, and I didn't want to put holes in this really nice trunk mat. But I want to drive this car and take it places, so I needed something to help keep things organized. They come in three different sizes and three different colors. They're leather wrapped with this nice accent stitching and the longer ones actually have cargo dividers. I'm looking forward to seeing how these things work out over time because I've already used the small one to tote around detailing supplies. It's super handy for that. This one's gonna be great for traveling and of course we got the mid-size one to test out. Plus, I can close the trunk and it fits perfect. Well everyone, this has been quite the process but a lot of fun as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like below. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care. Those are some big breaks. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Pretty sure I've owned cars with smaller wheels than this. <laughs> Dude, you should spin it. Give it, a, give it a whirl. I like it. Precision. I like it.